Samson Malo. I'm a photographer from Soweto. I'm coming from uh, Mdeni, so this is the section of Soweto next to Ezola. I consider photography for me to be similar to reading and writing. Photography is what I use as my voice to talk about everything else that happens around me. Musa for me is somebody that has an extremely large amount of commitment um, to his photography. So there are things like commitment, there's a large amount of talent as well. He is an, an, an energetic person. You connect with the energy that is surrounding him. Just been always been unique and always had emotions. Extraordinary would be a good word to describe him because he has a very specific way of seeing things that not everybody does either, which is very important. The Musa's work speak to the society. You find his mind in his work. Pretty much real life and real people and stories. He's a person who loves to speak about his work and about how his work connects to him as a person and how his work transforms. My love for photography actually um, started whilst I was in high school. I studied there and then junior. I didn't uh, consider photography a talent. There was an introduction of the new uh, curriculum, which is OBE, and then for the first time we had to do art at school. And so I think from that uh, I was drawn into uh, doing scrapbooking, you know. So we had this exercise where we had to do scrapbooking. And uh, me and my friends were always like into uh, music, hip hop in particular. We had always like collected magazines and books where we've looked at photographs of um, the artists that we like. So I think for me that's, that's when, you know, the love for the photographs started, you know, because uh, whenever I would have to do uh, assignments for the class, you know, uh, it would always be like cut out from these magazines of these musicians and what. So I think that should be like the first time where I started uh, noticing photographs. and friends uh, it's grade 12 we just finished writing uh, our exams and we're thinking what is it that we'll do with our lives and so I had this uh, friend of mine from Mdeni Ubunolo who uh, had noticed that I love photographs he told me about the school in Newtown which is part of the Market Theatre Foundation uh, Market Photo Workshop where they give lessons in photography and they give free buzzeries and stuff you know I went there uh, to do my training. When I held the camera for the first time, it was uh, really intimidating. Um, I think I say that because with this medium or with my practice, I'm interested like in relationships that are built with people. And so um, when you have the camera with you, it influences how or what people show you, you know. So when you come with the camera, people will try maybe to pose or they get intimidated by the camera. For that reason, uh, I've always had like a strange relationship uh, 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 with, the, with the camera as a tool. I think my introduction to that school was the point where I started taking photography seriously because then I was introduced to the core of the medium and excuse me, like where I've done basic classes, you know, uh, the foundation, uh, a little bit of a history of uh, photography and visual literacy and professional practice. After that, um, through Market Photo Workshop, I got to spend more time with industry experts because uh, I then got an internship at the school where I worked as a coordinator for courses and training and as a course assistant as well. So I would sit closely with, with uh, trainers uh, as they prepared their lessons and I would do research for them on the particular subjects and what. I think also when I started uh, to exhibit, I then got invited to uh, different kinds of photography masterclasses where it dealt with uh, the purpose of making photographs, the purpose of the projects that we do, and I got to uh, get more training or coaching on uh, the meaning of photographs and the purpose of the photographs, especially in Africa. And you know, so I think I've kind of 
got uh, a bit of like formal training in class and then afterwards you know I got uh, training through these uh, master classes and what Photography is a really like practical uh, uh, thing so uh, I think like the more one makes photographs it's how then uh, the skill somehow and a signature or a particular identity takes shape or takes form. I've had a couple of uh, international uh, group exhibitions so the ones that stands out uh, I was invited to exhibit alongside uh, a number of uh, South African uh, young artists in the Netherlands in a project space uh, called MU. Also I have exhibited in Berlin uh, with this uh, project space uh, called uh, IFA. So also I was exhibiting with uh, a group of um, South African uh, artists and Berlin artists. I think the most uh, important ones for me was the opportunity to go to uh, different uh, countries in the continent in Africa on uh, photography festivals, one being uh, the Bamako uh, Biennale, which happens annually, where you get uh, different kinds of photographers from Africa and internationally, where they stay for two weeks and then there's workshops and different exhibitions. And then the other one was the Lagos Photo Festival, which uh, I went uh, in 2013. So the same format, you know, where you get uh, international and uh, photographers uh, from Africa who uh, deal with different subject matters, different forms of uh, photography. And then uh, the last would be the Addis Ababa uh, Photo Festival. So for me, those are the most important because that's when also uh, this more of relationships that were formed with um, uh, photographers and especially young photographers who are active in Africa. I've faced a couple of uh, challenges uh, throughout uh, my journey with uh, photography. One that I can think of was uh, when uh, I got robbed of uh, my equipment. My car broke down as uh, I went to look for help. You know, uh, my car was broken into, it took bags and then left with, like, they cleaned me out basically, which was a serious, like, setback, you know, because photography is it's, it's not an easy uh, or a cheap practice, you know, so. Buying equipment is very, very expensive and at that point I wasn't uh, insured or anything and I had collected uh, like quite an extensive amount of, of equipment. I had to uh, uh, try and recover uh, the equipment and also just I think emotionally, you know, um, that has impacted me in a way that like I'm always now like, you know, um, uh, on a panic, you know, when I have to go out and work because I'm thinking about, you know, this shouldn't happen and what, you know. He is an exceptionally hard worker and that's why he is where he is. So whatever kind of trouble, whatever kind of, like, I mean, he's had cameras stolen, he's had all kinds of things happen. Whatever's happened, it's never been like, okay, that's it, I can't do my career anymore because this is too hectic. And that happens to a lot of people. Um, but he just carries on and he steps on and he continues working. Whatever happens, I'm always, always, always going to come out winning and I'm always going to push and I'm never, ever giving up on this. I think working in different uh, countries, it's a challenge. But uh, a challenge that is, is very interesting because you find that like, uh, well, in different countries, of course, you've got different sets of rules, you know. I find it to be much more difficult to navigate Africa than it is uh, to um, navigate when I'm in Europe. He's not somebody that backs off from kind of something that's going to be difficult. He actually really embraces those things that are making kind of working easier. You know, some people just do things because it's easy to do, but Musa is very specific and precise about what he sees and how he sees it. Even though he has kind of a bit of a snapshotiness to his images, he's very particular about what he does. And they're quite beautiful in a very crazy way because they're kind of loud pictures, but they're very quiet at the same time and very um, stark.
which I think it lends to the quietness of the images. I remember with a group of friends in Bamako, it's very peaceful there, you know, people that seem like they're very calm there, you know, and me coming from Soweto North and used to like the hecticness and what, you know, you have to find a way of adjusting to that environment and, and the way you approach people, you know, would be really different to what you, you used to. And getting to Berlin again, it's uh, when we went out with friends again to make photographs, you know, it was a completely uh, different kind of uh, scene. It's very much like Johannesburg, the city, you know, where there's a lot of like youth culture there, the vibrancy and, and, and all of that, you know. So for there, it, it, it seemed much more easier. I'm here at the Back Factory Art Studios to meet a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Blessing Rubeni. He is a visual artist and um, so he's, he's exhibited a lot. I'm going to go and speak to him so that he give me a little bit of tips about what I'm going to do. Musa being a black and white photographer and now challenged, uh, challenged by uh, using a lot of colors in his masterpiece. I believe that he will pull off and he will make it work because I, I know he has got a, a, a photographic eye that if you're gonna place the same vision into the masterpiece, the masterpiece will come out nicely. I believe and I trust in him.
blessing, you know, gave me a little bit of uh, tips about uh, what I need and how to uh, go on with uh, the piece that I want to create. It seems like it's more work than what I anticipated, but uh, I'm not worried about working. I think one thing that he said is that uh, I need to be more specific about what is it that I want to do. So I guess for now, I just have to go uh, prepare my sketches then uh, collect the materials that I need. I might actually come back to him and then get his materials to create the piece. And uh, one thing is that, you know, I've always worked with photography and drone and done that stuff other than high school. So uh, I'm looking forward to doing this. Okay, so I'm back again at uh, the Perfect at the Studios. So this is uh, Blessing Studio. So uh, after a little bit of training that he gave me about his process, I decided that I won't be using uh, my own images, mainly because of the idea that um, throughout the process I might have to deface my, my images. And uh, since uh, I work as a photographer, I think uh, the images, to see the actual photographs is more important. So I felt like having to deface them uh, will uh, actually uh, not make sense. So what I decided to do was that I will take it back to the days when I used to do scrapbooking back at school and work with the actual images. So um, I, I came back here and uh, Blessing has uh, given me his materials. And um, yeah, so I've got the magazines, I've got scissors, I've got different types of paints and uh, I've got my brushes there with, um, uh, that are soaked in water. And also he has given me uh, this brown paper which is, which is uh, acid free. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, I'll start uh, creating my piece. I think um, 
if I had kind of like a theme. Actually, like I really like this guy with this uh, this guy and the way he's posing, and especially closer to that girl, which kind of like gives that vibe of the beach, you know. Uh, but I feel like with uh, this picture here, you know, uh, of Mickey Mouse and what, and also having uh, Hulk, and then this. Uh, figure of a lady there fashion I feel like it becomes a bit like too much and it does not make sense you know so if I had had like a theme where I work with these two and found more where it kind of gives, gives it a beach vibe I think it could have worked but um, I don't know I'm not too keen about this piece you know um, I think I'll just like um, stick to photographs but uh, maybe I should call Blessing so that he can check uh, and give me his opinion, you know? Yo, progressed. Very impressed, you know? Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, I mean, the composition and everything and the colors, they work very well. But I'm not quite sure about um, your characters because it seems the piece itself, what it tells me is materialism, you know? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it attached the, mod, the, the the current affairs, things that are happening, especially in what what, what I, 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 I normally call them the our so called the representative of the masses. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much impressed, Mosa. You know, um, I did not expect that you you're gonna come up, especially the color part. You know, for me, it it it, 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 it worked very well. So how did you, like, when you ventured to this blank canvas, how did you, like, decided to say, you know what, I want this character to be featured, I want this person to be there. And then the most part of the car and the middle part of the robotic, how, how, what is it that came to your mind when you, you completed this, this piece? For me, it, it is impressive because what, whatever that I gave you, the results just proved it say you were listening i don't know man i really enjoyed doing this the entire process and everything but you know what i think i should stick to photography you know i leave all of this to you don't get lost my friend there is still open field to venture to you might be a ecologist one day eh? i don't know <laughs> I'm sure, sure. Why, why not, man? I'll just stick, but to, your stick to your photography. Yeah. Because you belong there. <laughs> Don't come to my world. 